thank you everyone. I, I certainly appreciate you guys coming out on a on a American Idol uh, opening night. So <laughs> I know how tough that is for some, including my daughter. I, I, Tom, thank you very much. Tom, Tom has been uh, a, a very trusted friend and, and and a great confidant for me since the, the GUO days. And and I'm, I'm just going to get a couple quick thank yous out of the way. Uh, Ron Crothers and the Yacht Club. Uh, Bill as well have been have been awesome to us the whole, the whole time through the GUO activities and then tonight with with this facility as well. Um, I do want to introduce a couple people that are on my committee. Uh, Patty Batesel and her and her husband Gary. Uh, Patty's actually my my chairperson, and her husband Gary right next to him. I appreciate all their help and service, um, as well as uh, Kirk Bidwell is running all my my kind of database stuff that's going on. Uh, I also have uh, Jay Hacker, who's my treasurer who I'm sure is gonna be hitting everybody up for money before you leave. So, thank you, Jay. <laughs> um, and then, of course, uh, Tom again. And the other people that I wanna take a minute out to recognize is, is my wife, Robin, who's checking you in at the table over there. Uh, my wife and I have been together for, for 18 years. She, she puts up with me and my little excursions off into political <laughs> forays, and, and, and she goes, oh, that's just Pete. And I also have my daughter here. My daughter is a, uh, I get to toot my daughter's horn here for a second. Straight A student will be a freshman at HSE next year. So I certainly appreciate them. And my son who's at hockey practice, which is normally where I would be right now. But uh, this I found a little bit more important. So I gave up one hockey practice to come uh, talk to you folks. Um, and I certainly appreciate everybody showing up tonight and, and supporting. Uh, as of uh, 8.20 this morning, I did file paperwork with Hamilton County to run for District 1 Fisher Town Council. Um, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to continue the voice that I think this area needs. I, I got involved, and I want to make things kind of clear because you know I've been misquoted a lot by the folks on the town council. I got involved in the GUO for really one specific reason, and I felt there was an injustice that was going on when I had seven council people, okay, who were going to invoke new taxes on me, and I didn't get an opportunity to elect them to office. I find that fundamentally wrong on every level, and I still do. You know, it's the voice of the people that should always prevail in government, and they took that away from us. And, and, and I stepped into that group, and, and I was mad. I, I was hopping mad. You know, the numbers that were, were thrown out when, when that original unification came around was 15 to 22 percent increased property taxes. And, and when I started investigating it more, I tried to figure out how they could even do that. And I got quite an education along the way, and, and, I, and I was at a lot of meetings, as Tom said, and I met a lot of residents around the guy's area, and that was just, that, that was probably the most, uh, uh, the biggest benefit that I had when I was running that GUO group, other than fighting for the, the, the folks and guys that I did meet, was the people that I actually did meet around guys, and, and actually around the whole community. But I, I think that if you find something wrong, I can't sit still. I'm not one of those people who can take that thing lying down without saying that's wrong. And I want to stand up and fight for those, those things that I just don't truly believe in. And that was one, and that's why I came in there. You know, I think you'll find that you know, I'm, I'm fundamentally conservative on every level. I don't believe that the taxes that I do pay today are spent the way I want them to be spent. Uh, I, I think there's, there's a number of ways that, that need to improve on every level of government, starting now with the town, because that's the one that I think that we can most affect. You look at, at, at what Fishers has done, and I think the residents of Fishers are some of the finest people that I've ever met. I think the town, fundamentally, is a great town. I think sometimes they lack the leadership and, and the vision to take the town where it really needs to go. And, and I worry about that. I sit there and worry about you know, what's gonna happen if we let them continue on this way. And, and, and some of the key points that I wanted to bring out tonight were really, the things that kind of stick in my mind are business development around the town. Okay, I believe we've got to take a, a, a larger burden of the tax burden off the residents and put it onto businesses. We need a larger business base in this town. We have the I-69 transportation corridor. You've got exit 10. You've got uh, certainly plenty of room off of exit 5. The downtown, the 37th corridor. You know, if you drive down Meridian Street in Carmel, if you go up and down I-65 in Zionsville, you can see the development that is going on there. I guess my question is, is why isn't Fishers there? Why doesn't Fishers get those opportunities to get those kind of developments going on there? We, we've got a, a, a jewel of a business in, in, in Sally May. Unfortunately, Sally May has is, is, is been retrenching with a lot of things going on. 
Again, we need to help that business base here in, in, in Fishers. Someone needs to concentrate on bringing business to Fishers. They need to work not only with the local Chamber of Commerces, they also need to work with the State Chamber of Commerces. And I can tell you right now, someone ought to be lobbying Illinois businesses to bring them over here to, to Indiana if you folks have been reading any of the news. You know, you've got a Democratic-led state over there who just put a 60% increase on, on personal income taxes and a 40-plus percent on business income taxes over there. I can bet you there's a lot of Illinois businesses looking for somewhere else to, to populate, and I believe Fishers is the town to do that. The, the other item that I, I want to touch on is people want to go ahead and pin me down to say I'm, I'm anti-residential construction. I'm not. I'm not anti-construction at all. I'm very pro-development. But when you're looking at the development that you're doing here in a town, I think there's a litmus test that has to happen. And you have to ask your question, if you're going to put in new developments, what is the benefit for the town? Is there a benefit for the town? Does it increase or does it decrease the property values around it? And more importantly, does it burden our schools or does it help our schools? And, and, and it's the HSE school district, and I'm going to take a step back here for a minute. My wife and I moved from California uh, seven or eight years ago now, going on eight years now. And, and one of the main reasons why we moved into the state of Indiana was taxes, but the other one was schools. You know, I, I had my daughter who was going into uh, uh, kindergarten in, in, in a Newport Beach school district. And I can tell you that I, I was appalled when I took her to opening night that night and, and, uh, in, in Southern California in Newport Beach. And, and, I, and I looked at my wife and I said, I can't put her in that school system. So I, I actually had to take her out and put her into a private school for kindergarten because it was just horrific. So when we made the decision to move to Indiana and we made the decision to move into Fishers, one of those crown jewels that we looked at was the HSE school district. But I can tell you guys, they're under a lot of pressure right now. They're under a ton of pressure. There's a lots of problems that are going on with the schools here in Indiana. But HSE has been able to maintain th their, their standing in the community. But I mean to tell you, they've got a long fight ahead of them. And I think whatever development we do, whether it be business and or residential, needs to take that into account every single time they do a project. And I can't say that they do that every time they, they run a development here in, 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 in Fishers. Uh, and, and I think that has to be one of the litmus tests that goes on in this community. Uh, and, and probably other than my fiscal conservatives and keeping taxes low all the time, the one thing that, that, that I learned throughout the GUO experience that, that I felt needed uh, probably a, a very long look was the transparency of, of this particular town government. Uh, I, I don't know that the residents understand what they're doing. Not that the residents don't understand, but they don't understand what the town council's doing. The communication that comes out of this town council, in my opinion, is poor, and it has been poor. They can tell that just by the way they handle the Geist annexation. You can tell that by the way they handle the merger that's currently going on for Fall Creek Township. You know, again, there is not a good transparency in this government. You know, this is your town. You guys deserve to know what's going on. You guys deserve to be heard. You know, I, I find it you know, very unfortunate that, that when you, know, you ask the, the politicians and your current council members what's going on, they, they point you back to Gary Hoff. You can't do that. If you're elected by the people, you have to report to those people. You have every right to know what's going on in your government. I can tell you that for, for a fact, if I get a phone call, I will answer that phone call. I will tell you what's going on. Whether I agree with it or not, I'm going to tell you what's going on in this, in this uh, town council. And again, I think that has to happen. It has to happen soon. Um, I, I really, I want to represent not only the people of Geist, but the people of Fishers. I feel a larger calling, okay, to help. And I wish I could tell you why that was. I have a feeling in my gut that just doesn't let me stand still for things. And, and I feel that if, if, if I could offer some help to the residents of Fishers to make this a better place, you know, when I leave it than when I found it, that's what I want to do. And, and again, I certainly appreciate all your guys' support and help. I also have Doug Almonds here tonight, too. Doug is part of our Fall Creek Township, uh, newly elected township board, so I'm glad uh, Doug showed up tonight as well. Um, and, and I guess people are gonna ask, what's next? 